Hi, I'm Brady, and I like to spend hours meticulously testing gear and curating lists for you so that you don't have to. Today, we're gonna be talking about this bag right here, the Moscow Moto Nomax V3. Let's get going. Here we are with the Moscow Moto Nomax V3 bag. This is actually my second Nomax bag that I've had. Prior to this, I picked up a Moscow Moto Nomax V2. I figured the best place to start would be to start by asking, why did I buy this? So I'd like to go through a couple of reasons that really made me decide to go with this bag over some other models and brands that are out there. They integrate a water bladder into the bag. And my philosophy whenever I'm riding an adventure bike or riding off-road is that I want to keep as little weight as possible on my back and also on the back of the motorcycle. Being able to carry that on the front of the bike was a big sell for me. The other thing that I really wanted, at the time that I bought the V2, I was looking for a bag that would work as a day pack off the bike as well as a bag that would be really versatile while it was on the bike. The second big feature that sold me on this bag was actually the conversion to the backpack. It's got backpack straps that kind of conceal down into the back pouch. You just pull them out whenever you release the bag from the bike and then you can throw the bag on your back and walk around with a water bladder, use it as a day pack, whatever you're looking for. It's important to address the elephant in the room, which is the price of this bag. In this colorway, you're going to spend about $310 before tax. If you can find a V2 and stock or if you can buy one secondhand, you'll be able to pick one up at a much more affordable price. Take a look at some of the other competitor brands and their pricing. For example, the Giant Loop Fandango. I believe that that bag now is really close to $300 on Giant Loop's website. And for the same price, you can pick up something like this. So that's not a hit on Giant Loop. What I'm saying is, is that for $300, you get so much more in a bag like this than you might with just a tub style bag. All right, so now that we've kind of addressed the price of this bag, let's look at what you get with that price. So let's talk about some of the quality on the bag. First of all, you get really good high quality buckles. You get some molly straps and molly webbing on the outside. You get the water bladder, you get the backpack straps, and you get all kinds of organization inside the bag. Now, the downside to this is that because everything is so compartmentalized inside the bag, you don't necessarily get as much free space to throw bigger items into. The reason why I upgraded to the V3 was because I was starting to try to carry more stuff in my kit. They made the V3 expandable, gave it an expandable pocket. And so now I don't have to worry about running out of room. We're gonna dive deeper into the service commitment that you get whenever you buy a Moscow Moto bag. The stories even just in my friend group of Moscow Moto replacing things or fixing things or making things right with customers whenever their gear doesn't necessarily hold up are pretty plentiful. Beyond that, you also get a very good warranty with any Moscow gear. That also covers crash replacement. So if you crash and you destroy one of your bags, Moscow Moto is gonna do what they can in order to get you taken care of and get you back on the road with good gear. So in regards to how big this bag is, this was something that I was really concerned about whenever I was looking to buy one of these. So the Africa Twin has a very, very tight steering radius. And as a result, it's really limited on which tank bags it can use. I have a one inch bar riser on my bike and prior to putting the bar riser on there, there was a little bit of interference with the controls and the bars at full lock. That really didn't bother me for two reasons. One, I spend very little time at full lock. And two, this is a soft, squishy bag. So if the handlebars do hit the soft, squishy bag, it's not gonna be a big deal. It doesn't get in the way when you're standing and trying to move around on the bike. You can feel it, it is there, but it is a soft bag. And so if you need to get up and over the bars, the bag is just gonna smush underneath you. And I can say that pretty confidently, even though my bag is filled to the brim, it really doesn't get in the way all that much whenever you're standing on the bike. All right, so lastly, a lot of people have some concerns about how hard it is to get this bag on and off the bike whenever you have to put gas in it. I have come up with a pretty good method. All we have to do is unclip one of the buckles in the corner of the harness, shift the bag over to the side, and that gives me plenty of room to be able to pop open the gas cap and put gas in my bike. The important thing is that it's convenient um, and it's not very hard to do. So after that, you can just close your gas cap up, but then you're gonna just end up putting your buckle back in that corner. 
So I think one of the best ways to explore the features of this bag is just to show you how I pack it out, both for trips and then also for daily use, because it is a little different between the two. We'll just jump right in. So the first layer is the beaver tail, and you access the beaver tail just by unbuckling the two buckles on the outside of the bag. So you open the beaver tail up. So I have a small EDC flashlight. I have a tire pressure monitor, my Leatherman, and then I have a small bit extender for my Leatherman in this pouch here. Under this flap inside the beaver tail, you have a couple of other pouches. Um, but in this main pouch right here, I like to keep all of my Leatherman bit kits so that I keep all of the tools that I need in order to easily access something on the motorcycle nice and up front here. You can see too that there's a lot of room um, that I'm still not utilizing inside the beaver tail. But if you keep things pretty slim on the outside, then the bag does a good job of staying tight and close to the bike. All right, so next we're gonna get into the second layer of this bag, which I consider be to be the meat and potatoes of everything that I keep in here day in and day out. All right, so inside the second layer here, you can see that there is a ton of organization. I have pretty much every type of cable that I would need to charge any of my camping equipment, any of my electronics. It takes up so little space and I have enough buddies with different types of devices and stuff that I might as well just keep them all in here all the time. I also keep inside these little organizer pockets a bottle of hand sanitizer that's easily accessible. I keep another little pocket knife right here. I have my charging adapter for my bike so that I can charge devices off the bike. I keep some chapstick, some earplugs, and then a smaller uh, keychain flashlight right here. I also keep a lighter in here just in case I need one for camping. It's always good to have redundancy on items like that. So I keep one in my tank bag all the time. In this zippered mesh pocket right here, I like to keep all of the spare parts that I might need for this bag. So I keep like spare buckles. I also like to keep my block off plates for my helmet for when I take my visor or my peak off whenever I'm trying to do a lot of road riding. Now the one area that differs between the way that I pack this bag for daily use and the way that I pack it for trips is what lives in this top zippered mesh pouch right here. So if we open that up right now, it's packed for, you know, like a longer trip or a camping trip. So I keep a power bank up there and the top is a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. So it should go pretty far. Um, especially if I try to keep most of my devices charged off the bike throughout the day. When I use this bag for, you know, just daily, regular riding, commuting, or whatever, I actually have this pouch empty. They have included a little pouch for sunglasses in this, uh, in this second layer. It's all felt lined and everything, so you don't have to worry about your sunglasses getting scratched if you put them in there. Even when the bag is fully loaded, I can still comfortably put my sunglasses in here without feeling like they're going to get smashed. All right, so we're going to jump into the third layer of the bag here. Now, this is kind of the last storage layer that's in this bag and it is probably the largest pouch in the bag. And this is the one that expands as well on the V3, but we'll go ahead and open it and dive in. So in the third layer of organization here, we have uh, another zippered mesh pocket. When I'm going on trips uh, more recently, I've liked to start bringing a camera and a lens so that I can take pictures. Even with the camera and the lens in there, there's still quite a bit of room in this pouch. And so for trips especially, I'll carry things like my headlamp, GoPro, and a spare GoPro battery. In the zippered mesh pouch, I like to keep a microfiber cloth that I can use for around camp, like drying my hands, drying off dishes, or cleaning my helmet. And then I also keep this uh, small, pretty rudimentary first aid kit. I don't really know how to use much more than what's in here, so I don't have the need or feel the need to carry something more advanced. And then the last thing that I think is important to note is that the rain cover pocket, although you access it from the outside of the bag, it is a pocket that sits on the inside of the main storage compartment here. Unzip those, and then you get the expansion on the bag. I haven't really had the need to expand my bag when I'm using it, but another philosophy that I like to institute whenever I'm riding my motorcycle is that I never want to be at full capacity with my luggage. So I always wanna have a little bit of extra room for something if I run into town or if I need to shed a layer or whatever. So I actually really like that I can use this in its normal configuration without expanding it. And then I have that expansion if I need a little bit of extra room for something. The next layer of zippers is actually gonna be the compartment for the water bladder. 
One thing that's nice about the way that this is designed is that you don't have to pull the water bladder out each time that you need to top it off or fill it up. There's also a small zipper on the side over here that the hose comes out of. So the hose comes out of this main water bladder compartment um, and then wraps around the entire bag and gets put into these retaining clips right here. Now, one thing that I will say about the hose and the retaining clip goes back to kind of what we were talking about with rider interference. Now, this is designed to wrap all the way around to the back of the bag and it does create a little bit of bulk on the back side and so I have found that sometimes that can interfere with me when I'm standing up um, but it's no big deal in fact if you just shove a little bit of the extra hose inside the water bladder pouch you can end up making the hose short enough so that it doesn't wrap around the back and then it's still long enough to be able to take a drink of um, of water while you're sitting on the bike and for quick reference this is how big the bag is whenever I have it loaded down with everything I would take with me on a trip including a full frame camera and a pretty decent sized lens and a full water bladder. I also won't necessarily keep my headlamp, my GoPro. This is the size of the bag packed how I like to pack it for daily use, which has a lot fewer items in it. All right, so we've got the bag off the bike now and I just wanna quickly show you how the backpack straps work. There is a pouch here at the very bottom of the bag in between the harness and the rest of the bag and that holds your backpack straps. All you do is you pull those out and then over here on the bottom of the bag, you have these little clips. So all you have to do is take the clip at the end of the backpack strap, clip it to the little ring on the bag, and then you have a full-blown backpack that's ready to go on a hike or um, a day trip or whatever you've got going on. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about in this video are some differences between the Nomax V2 and the Nomax V3. And if you look on the website, the list of features and differences for the V3 is pretty significant, but there were a lot of things that I wasn't expecting when I got this bag and started looking into it. So the first thing that I wanna call out is that I think that the harness placement on the V3 is slightly different than it was on the V2. So on the V2, I think that, that the harness came much farther toward the back of the bag, which made it to where it was difficult for the bag to fit on tanks that kind of have that slope and then the flat spot at the top. Where they put the harness on the V3 makes it to where the harness can get sucked down close to the bike, but the bag still kind of holds its shape, which I think uh, was, was a really good upgrade. One of the second differences that I noticed between the V2 and the V3 is the upgraded backpack straps. So on the V2, the backpack straps were very thin mesh. There really wasn't much to them. It wouldn't be comfortable to wear the bag all day or anything like that. For the V3, they really upgraded the straps. They gave you like a pad inside the strap as well so that it's more comfortable on your shoulder. And now this is a bag that I feel like I could carry this pretty comfortably for a long period of time on my back. So the third difference that we'll talk about, and this is only gonna be true if you bought a very early version of the Nomax V2, but they have now updated or upgraded the water bladder hose. So now there is actually a twist lock on the hose and also a bite valve on the hose as well. Uh, the fourth difference, and this is one that we've already talked about, but they included the expansion zipper. I believe they say on their website that that's supposed to add like two liters to the storage capacity of the bag. That was one of the features that made me want to upgrade to the V3 from the v2 to look at the fifth difference that i've noticed between the v2 and the v3 we have to break back into the main compartment so we'll do that real quick all right so in the main compartment here we notice some organizational differences between the v3 and the v2 in the v2 the rain cover would have come here from the top because the external pocket for the rain cover would have been on the top of the bag. So this mesh organizer pocket actually was at the bottom of the pouch in the main compartment instead of the top. So the rain cover and the mesh storage compartment have flipped. And I've noticed that that has actually opened up a lot more room in the bag because you get so much extra room up here near the top of the bag. So to get into the sixth difference between the V2 and the V3 that I've noticed, we have to break into the second layer compartment. First of all, on the very bottom layer, Layer here you get more elastic straps uh, that could be like cord keepers or for just putting whatever you need in there um, and then I believe on the v2 this was a zippered pouch instead you get three nice mesh individual uh, pouches with an elastic top to keep things secure and then on the outer flap here we used to have three zippered mesh pockets now we just have two larger zippered mesh pockets 
And then the last difference that I've noticed requires us to dive in under the beaver tail here. So we'll go ahead and open that up. So under the beaver tail here, we now have a separate pouch inside the beaver tail, it has a Velcro closure. You can open that up. You have a lot of room inside this pouch. And then there's also a smaller pouch that's about half the size inside of that pouch. So that is the Moscow Moto Nomax V3. Uh, we talked about what led me to buy this bag. We talked about the quality that Moscow Moto has and how it compares to other companies that make really popular tank bags. We talked about how I pack this bag both for daily use and for longer trips. And then we really discussed some differences between the V2 and the V3. So I hope that you found this video interesting. I I hope that this helps you make some sort of decision toward gear buying in the future. So let me know in the comments what your favorite tank bags are. Let me know if you have a version of the Moscow Moto Nomax. I'd love to hear what you think of it also. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That was pretty bad. Damn it. I got distracted, I better. You can also take my whole hand if it gets removed from my body, apparently.